Hello my sweet friends and welcome to DIY with Nadia. Today I'm sharing my top five cross wreaths. They're going to be different holiday, different styles, and different techniques. Two of them are going to be the same technique, but the rest of them are going to be different and unique. Let's get started. Today we are using this cross form to make a wreath and I got this at the Dollar Tree during Easter. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of painting wreath forms, at least they're not plastic, they're metal and painting them is just fine. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a good two coats of the white paint and primer and it should cover it fairly well. And yeah, I'm gonna turn it around and do the back once. The front is more important than anything. And then I'm going to seal this with this UV resistance clear acrylic coating. I like using this. I I've used it for a long time. This is a gloss, but you can obviously use either matte or gloss. It really doesn't matter because it's going to get covered. And our whole point is to make it white. I got my cross already and I actually gave it one coat of the white paint. It was plenty. Before we get started, I did want to give you the measurements. This thing is so huge. So as you can see right here, it's 12 inches by 24. I did get five deco mesh rolls and I'm going to be doing the woodland technique. The measurements for this is going to be 22 inch little strips. That'll give us eight trips per roll because we are working with five yards of deco mesh. So this is going to be a super fun wreath to make. For the woodland technique, I do cut my pipe cleaners in half. To start making our bundles, we need three things. We need our pipe cleaner, we need something heavy, I use these metallic scissors, and we need our mesh. So I'll start by unrolling putting my scissors on one end and kind of just moving it up and then here I'm going to make a little roll on the other end and what this is going to do is it's going to catch the frame. I made a little roll and now I'm walking it up in the middle just in the middle kind of I'm just squishing both sides kind of and walking it up until I get to about a few inches left maybe three inches left of the other end and then I'm going to roll this this for me is the hardest part because you're kind of doing it with one hand and sometimes they can get a little, you know, funny. But there you go. We made a roll and when I grab my chenille wire, I wrap it around and I just like to push it up. Now I'm going to tighten it and we have our beautiful, beautiful. The second way you can do these rolls that might be easier for you is grab either a clothespin or some kind of a little pin and make your roll and pin it. Then you're going to turn it around, move that back, start working on your other side. Make your roll, walk it in, walk it in, walk it in, walk it in, walk it in. Take this off and put your pipe cleaner on. All my little ruffles are all set to go and I'm going to start working on the cross. I only did four rolls to see how far it'll take me, but if you're running low on your deco mesh, we're still decorating the center, so I would focus on the outsides. So these two sections right here, these and this one, because if anything, if you don't have enough, you could just put a big bow here or some florals, whatever you're going to do. That's just a suggestion. For this method, we're kind of going to be working in pairs because this is a straight wreath. I got my first two, I got my second two. Now I'm going to put two more right here. All right, we are six in. It looks beautiful, it looks full. Seven, eight, I am going to put right on these intersections right here, on the crossbars right here where they intersect. I have four on this little section with two being on the sides here and then once again I'm going on this little cross section okay as I'm going along I feel like this needs two more right here like I feel like it's not full enough so I'm going to put more right here 
Okay, now I'm going to start working on this side. And the game plan is to put six right here, six right here, and eight right here. Okay, this is how far four rolls have taken us. I think it fills out really, really nicely. But I am going to break into the fifth roll and go ahead and make my little curlies. And I will be right back. Our wreath is all done. Now it's time to decorate it for fall. I'm bringing in these leaves. Can you believe how gorgeous these are? These I just got at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to cut it like this with the three leaves on top. And so this is going to go like this. This one full one is going to go down this way and so i'm going to cut it right here using a little piece of floral wire i'm going to bring these guys together to do the sides i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to cut off the, the top three leaves and i'm going to bring these two together with wire for a nice strong seal i'm bringing in the 14 gauge this is the thicker stronger one and i'm just going to go across here switch up and go across the other way and now we have a nice strong hold now i'm going to go back to my lighter one and just give it a good twist or two this is just going to connect to our actual wreath and keep this one long also connected right here and now it's time to connect it to the wreath form all fed through i'm just going to tie them in place i'm going to put this cross aside and i'm going to bring in this little cross the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this backing we don't need it and now i'm going to paint the cross i am using a flat brush and that is what i recommend for this because i want to keep bless this home and just paint around right here get rid of all that blue because it does not go with our color scheme. So I'm just going to go around very carefully and I'm going to give it a few coats of the chalk paint and I'm also painting the sides. Now that our cross is painted, I'm going to do one of my favorite techniques. It's really easy, really cute, and we're just going to give this cross a distressed look. It is going to look like it, it was a metal cross that was painted white and it's chipping on the sides. It's okay to have heavier parts and then lighter parts. I'm all done with the cross, but as I put it on my wreath, I realized that there's this space right here that's a little open. I'm going to bring in a few more of these leaves. When attaching a wire, you first need to obviously consider how we're going to attach it. And since we're going to attach it right here, we're going to go diagonally on a cross. But I do not like attaching wire by itself just because it's so thin I'm going to put it down and then I'm going to grab a piece of felt and put it right on top this is going to seal it in it's going to be a lot stronger and if you want you could just grab another piece and hot glue it across this way also that just seals it in completely feeding it through to lock it in place I decided to go back and cover this area also so I'm taking one of the ones we cut off and I'm going to insert it right here using a little bit of wire I'm going to secure it in place our wreath is complete liner i'm going to be using a minimum of six of these shelf liners usually take six for a round wreath but because this is a cross wreath it's going to probably take me a little bit more i'm thinking about seven rolls we are also going to be using a fabric now here you can see the fabric because it's layered but if you take it apart it looks like mesh it looks like very very thin mesh it's going to just give it a little bit of a shimmer I'm going to start with the fabric the fabric is 12 inches in width right here and I'm just going to cut it in half into six inch strips our shelf liners are going to be six inches by about seven and a half so the fabric is going to be six by eight I got my fabric all cut up now it's time to get the shelf liner going 
as you can see your shelf liner will come in 12 inches at the Dollar Tree and you want to cut it in half I used to unfold it all the way before but you know what the shelf liner from Dollar Tree is so thin and look at the line nice perfect even line nothing frizzy so this works just as well next I'm going to take the shelf liner and I'm just going to cut it in half and in half and in half and in half I'm not someone who would waste any and uh, this is how I always make it so I just fold it in half and you want to cut this until you get a rectangle that's about six inches by seven and a half inches And then here you go you have six inches by seven and a half almost eight inches and that is how quick we are done with our first roll I'm going to do the same thing with the second half and that's it this roll is done I'm going to continue cutting the rest of the shelf liners and I will be right back these are the pipe cleaners that are always in my description box and also in my Amazon shop. They are six inch zip ties and I find them to be perfect for pretty much anything I do. I'm going to start with the bottom of the wreath. I always kind of come up and then do all the sections on top. Let's get started. So you have two options to do for uh, the bow. You can either do it this way, bringing up I usually do this if I'm working with a wreath that has three rows and then you would just attach it and it would make a thick kind of wreath I like using it this way so let me grab a piece of fabric here I know the fabric is fairly sheer but just wait till I'm done with the bow it's going to be so beautiful and I'm just going to find my center and come up look how pretty the bow is I hope you guys can see the shimmer in it it's so pretty then I'm going to grab my zip tie and we are going to be filling in these two middle rows I zip tie it almost to the end but not quite I do want to make sure that everything is centered and that's when I'm going to just bring it together on top just like this and then zip tie it in place There you go. I am done with the first section. I have 14. Now I'm just going to go around cutting off all the tails from the zip ties. This looks pretty filled to me. So I'm going to move on to the next section and keep on going. The wreath is all done and I am absolutely loving it with this fabric. One thing I want to show you is because you're going to in two rows here if you have holes like this all you have to do is just crisscross them and you should not have much issues with it because this is supposed to be a liner it's supposed to catch on to each other and look at that I did that a few seconds ago and it's fine and now let's do the embellishment for the center of the cross I'm going to be making a bow starting with this beautiful rose ribbon that I got at craft outlet I'm going to make a long tail I'm making it 14 inches and then here I'm going to start twisting this is a one-sided ribbon so you do want to twist I'm going to make this loop five inches bring it to this side and then I'm going to twist take it to five inches here if you want you can definitely do it by hand but I love using the bow maker you can find these bow makers for ten to twelve dollars on Amazon they're not expensive and they are a huge help when you're making these bows and as I'm completing my loop I'm going to do a twist here this next ribbon I got from Michaels during their after Christmas sale and here I'm going to do the same thing twist right away because this is a one-sided ribbon I'm going to continue making five inch loops with this ribbon also and twist for the final ribbon I'm using this elegant pink and it's by Ofre and I got it at the Dollar Tree and this ribbon doesn't really have a side 
So you can just go ahead and just make the loops. To bring this bow together, I'm sneaking a zip tie in. Now I'm going to start opening my bow up. I grab the 20 gauge floral wire, fed it through the back of the zip tie, attach it to the cross, find my center, give it a few twists, dove all the tails. At this point, you could be done with the wreath. I, of course, you know me, I have to ribbon tail them. Fold in half, pinch, and bring back. Fold in half, pinch, and bring back. And I'm going to do the same thing with this cute little pink one. you're going to need for this wreath of course you're going to need a metal cross shape wreath form then these come around during Christmas time they come in a pack of six then you're going to need some sort of a green ribbon to finish off the bow I'm going to be using a combo of gold and red ribbon because I thought this would look perfect for a classic wreath so I'm going to be using those and of course you are going to need some floral wire or hot glue to start on the base of the wreath I'm going to put some hot glue on the end just like that and I'm going to wrap about an inch in right here and then fold it over so you have that bottom part covered and it'll stick all together. Next, I'm just going to start wrapping around and I also want this part to be nice and neat. And then we're just going to go around and around. I'm coming to the edge and I'm going to cover and I'm going to give it a dot of hot glue right there before I make my way to the top. I'm just zigzagging straight to the back. Don't forget we're going to have a big old bow right here and we're still going to cover this part. When it comes to this I'm going to squeeze this side of the ribbon and then I'm going to give it just a little bit of hot glue and that way I'm going to continue going and you're going to have the same look as on this side. Especially if you're going to hot glue the little picks onto your wreath, this is going to be a nice way to keep the back nicely. And the end I'm going to come around, this is where you kind of use a little bit more hot glue because you want to make sure that all of this looks good and I'm going to straighten out my ribbon just like this. Give it a, a little bit of hot glue on that edge right there to bring these two together. Then the tail I cut off, I'm just going to hot glue right there and then give it a lot of hot glue right here and on the inside and bring it over. And there you go, a nice neat fold. Now I'm going to repeat the same process going from side to side of the cross. Now I'm grabbing my floral wire and I'm going to cut about five inch little wire pieces. And I'm going to show you from the long end of the cross because this top is really easy to do. It's the hardest to take care of this bottom part. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two little branches to cover the corner of our little cross. There you go, so that's covered. And then of course we're going to need to cover these sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the next pick and right there where the three little branches unite underneath, I'm going to give it a little bend. I'm going to take the next pick and right underneath the connection, I'm going to bend it the other way. Now I have three I can put together. Grabbing my floral wire, I'm going to go through the three of them you can hardly see my wire I'm going to just give it a few twists set it exactly where i need it to be i'm pushing my wire through on both sides of these bars right here on these two center ones then going to the back and giving it a few twists after i twist it i'm going to fold it and fold it back like i usually do the reason i put it around both bars is first of all look at this it's solid second of all if you put it through the center you have a chance of them either falling out or something like that this way the bars are holding the branches in place at this point i'm going to cut off these long stems because i don't want them to show while i'm 
putting the next layer on and basically from now on I'm going to be getting rid of these now that I see how I like it I'm going to take this one because this one's in the center I kind of want to make sure that that one's nice and secured after the middle one is secured I'm going to attach this next pair and that is exactly what I'm going to be doing just moving on and just layering them making sure they look nice this is how much I have done so far I've used up two packs and two more branches from the next pack it's nice and full if I feel like it needs anything added later on we can definitely do that now I'm going to do the corners here and don't forget we are going to have a bow here and as we're doing the sides they're all going to face towards the center so my branches on this side are going to face this way these are going to face this way and the ones at the top are going to face this way they're all going to face in and we're going to do the same thing we did at the bottom which is bring one all the way to the top that's going to be our main one and then we're going to bend one this way to cover this area bend another one this way to cover this area and we may be done here because as I said my bow is going to be a multi-layer bow so it's going to take up this area for right now I'm going to just put my wire through the center to unite all three and then I'm going to follow the same pattern to the sides now it's time to make a bow and I'm going to be using my bow maker just because it's so much easier when you're layering ribbon to be using one of these the first ribbon I'm going to use that's going to be against the green is the gold just because it's the brightest one and it's going to give you the most impact and I guess the most brightness and the first thing I want to do is I want to see how big I want my loops to be on my measurement the loop that I measured is 10 inches so on my bow maker I'm going to make five inch loops First, I want to measure the tail and this time I don't want my tails to be too long and this ribbon is double sided it does have a front and a back so the first I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it because I want my tail to be that sparkly gold and then I'm going to go to the five inches right here measure off my five inches and I'm going to twist measure off my next five inches and twist again and I'm going to make four loops before cutting my tail I want to make sure that they're the same size and I'm going to put this tail on top this one I believe is from the Dollar Tree Dollar Tree usually has this one around Christmas time I'm going to measure my tail and I want my tail to be just a little longer than my loops and I'm going to do the same thing here which is I'm going to make it the same length loops which is five inches and I'm going to do four loops I'm just going to measure against this one and as you saw my first bow I started at the bottom and did on top my second layer I started with my tail on top and ended at the bottom this is just me balancing things out this next ribbon is a little bit on the short side this is really kind of left over so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on here and I'm going to do three inch loops hoping that this will carry me through let's see here three inches and I think I am good with it I think this is perfect perfection so I got my three inches and of course started at the top right on top of the red and ended right on top of the red with this ribbon I'm going to start on the side of the gold and with this ribbon I'm not going to twist because it pretty much looks the same on both sides and we're going to keep to that three inch mark all right and I managed to do three inches on this bow too we should be all set now I'm going to grab my zip tie and just grabbing it by the center just as it is I'm going to zip tie this bow together cut this off grabbing another zip tie I'm going to go across our bow and straight onto our wreath let's flip this in the back let's bring the zip tie together and I'm really making it tight in the back my bow is on already but before I straighten that out I'm going to cover the back the way I want to do this is I'm going to put a nice solid line of hot glue right there put my ribbon and then fold my ribbon right on that edge I'm going to hot glue kind of very lightly then I'm going to go an inch above fold it over and I'm just going to put the hot glue right on the ribbon so I know exactly how much I'm going to need same thing on this side 
I want this wreath to be permanent. That is why I use the wires. So I wanted to make sure that I cover that up. Look at this, nice, beautiful, and it's covered. To hang the wreath, I'm grabbing some floral wire and I'm grabbing a good chunk of it. I'm going to fold it in half because this one's a little bit on the softer side. And all I'm doing is I'm twisting it and I'm going to twist the other side too. Now this wire is twice as strong. I fed my wire through the two center rows before they hit that intersection so that we can have a nice balanced wreath. I'm going to take one third of the wire and on the other side, I'm going to have two thirds of the wire. I'm going to give it two twists and the longer wire, that's going to be our loop. We're just going to loop it just like this. This is our longer one. And then I'm going to twist it. I'm going to give it a few twists. And then I'm going to bring the second one and then twist it around the neck of the actual loop. And so basically I'm locking it in. I like using this technique because you don't have to use really heavy duty wire that's heavy on your hands. You just use a softer wire, but make it strong by twisting it. That's it. Now I have a good solid connection to hang the wreath and start prettying things up. You're just balancing things out. You have red here and then red to the sides. You're the boss here. Tell the ribbon where to go. These center ones, I'm just opening them up and twisting them and doing the same thing to the gold ones. Basically, we're going to have a poof and then a nice organized little bow on the outside of that. If your loops don't want to listen like this one over here, give it a little twist and put it in place. Once you have your bow all sorted out, now it's time to cut the tails. And you can either do the dovetails or you can do an angled tail. I'm going to do angled. That's just what I'm in the mood for. And then I'm going to cut this one a little shorter. These two are going to be a little longer, which is fine. And I'm going to turn this around and do the exact same thing on this side. Now it's time to look around and see if you wanna add any more greenery, if you feel like your wreath needs it. And that's it. We are done with this gorgeous and very simple wreath. Let's get started on the supplies for this wreath. Some pipe cleaners, one roll of deco mesh that is 10 inches by 10 yards, some sort of ribbon. This is a vintage ribbon. It's something that got thrifted, so it's nothing you can find, but just find ribbon that will work with your deco mesh. My deco mesh is ivory, has lots of gold, and that's why I'm going with this ribbon because it has gold edging on it. Then I'm matching some florals to go with my ribbon. I recommend using picks for this just because it's going to be easier to work with to brighten things up. I got some ivory white florals that I can mix in if I need to. And then of course we're going to need a cross wreath form. This is the one that's from the Dollar Tree. You can cut either in half or one thirds. I'm going to cut into one thirds and that's going to come pretty close to what I'm going to need but I just don't like dealing with tails if I don't have to so that's why I'm just cutting it into four inch strips. As always when I cut my pipe cleaners I go down the middle and make a little V just like that. It's easier to grab. You always know where your center is and it's just easier to work with. Now for our gorgeous, gorgeous deco mesh. Look at all that gold. I'm going to be cutting it into 10 inch strips. This deco mesh is 10 yards. As I said, 10 yards is 360 inches. You divide the 360 into the 10 inches because that's how long our little strips are and you're going to get 36 pieces which means we're going to work with 36 petals. That's going to be more than enough for our cross wreath. And now I'm just going to go ahead and cut the rest of the deco mesh roll. Now that our deco mesh is cut up, we're going to make petals. It's just a 10 by 10 strip. We're going to bring them together, cut edge to cut edge. 
And then we're going to gather about inch, inch and a half on the edging, just like that. And we're going to make this a zero fray wreath. We have our petal and as you can see, because the design of it, the gold in the middle, it's just going to make it so much more prettier. So after I do that, I grab my pipe cleaner and I'm just going to give it two tight twists and you have a petal. Let's do another one. Just bring it together, cut edge to cut edge. Gather it, about an inch, inch and a half. Grab our pipe cleaner, two tight twists, cut off any fraying, and that's it, you have a little petal. My petals are all done, let me put them to the side. Let's talk about the wreath form. We're going to divide the wreath form into six sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, we have 36 petals, six times six is 36. So in each section, we're going to put six petals. I like to always work outside in. So I'm going to take my petal and with my pipe cleaner, I'm going to attach it to the two middle rows. And because I made them so short, it's going to be just enough to bring the pipe cleaners together. First petal is attached. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. Every time I'm putting the next one on, I'm basically putting it on top of the tail. So I'm just wrapping my pipe cleaner around and we're going to keep it nice and neat in the back. I'm done with the three sections on top. Look how gorgeous. And now I'm going to start working from the bottom towards the center. Now it's time to start decorating it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make one loop bows. So I'm going to eye a loop and just kind of see where you want it, see how big you want it. And also before you cut it off, bring in your flowers. See how they're going to look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make three loops like this. I'm going to measure them off, cut it to the length, that you feel is nice. As you see, I zigzagged to make three strips of the original length that I measured. And I'm just going to cut dovetails on both sides. Now for a bow. I'm actually going to be attaching these bows separately, meaning I'm going to have three separate single loop bows. So I'm just going to fold it in half and then half again, I find my center, grab a floral wire or a pipe cleaner, and I think half is going to be more than enough because we're just going to attach it to the back. And the reason I'm doing this is you can move it around and manipulate it a little bit easier when they're separate, especially if you have thick ribbon like this one is, just like that. And then I'm going to attach. I'm attaching the bow to one of the four intersections on rows two and three or the middle two rows. As you can see, the six inch pipe cleaner is just enough. So I'm going to twist, fold and fold back. I'm going to make another one. Same thing, find my center. Fold it in half, find a center there, grab a pipe cleaner. And before I make it tight, I'm going to twist the tail, tighten it up. And this one, I want the tails to go the opposite way. And I'm actually going to try to sneak it in between these tails. My ribbon is on. Now it's time to attach our flowers. We have to decide how many we want. Maybe let's see what it looks like with three. Oh, I think it just gives it a beautiful fullness. I think it'll be nice. I'm using a zip tie to bring these together and I'm going to show you what I did. I put two of my little florals facing one way because you can tell I have the little buds right there. And then one facing the other way and in the middle, I'm just going to move all the greenery to the side because I almost want to make this big flower in the center. Now I'm going to add more of the white florals and I'm going to zip tie it again. The white florals are going to make a big, big difference. Another zip tie. Can you do this with floral wire? Absolutely. It's just not going to hold as well as a zip tie. With a zip tie, it is just in place. Look at this. It's going nowhere. So after I zip tied it tight, 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 cut off the tail. I'm so sorry, I just realized the camera wasn't on. But all I did was grab the pipe cleaner, wrapped it around the base right here where my zip ties are, and fed it through to the back and tied it in the back. Our floral is absolutely stunning and it just works really nicely 
with the whole look of the cross wreath. I think it's going to be an absolutely beautiful, beautiful wreath. wreath i'm going to start with six rolls of white deco mesh rolls from the dollar tree then some white chenille stems and of course we're going to need the wreath form i do like to give it a coat of white paint just once when i'm working with so much white because you don't want that to stand out this is just an option if you want to do this but you can definitely just give it a spray paint of white paint any paint acrylic pa spray paint will do and then covered with some sort of an acrylic coating i like using this uv resistant one first things first i'm going to grab my pipe cleaners and i like to cut these in four inch strips after that i like to fold them in half in a little v the dollar tree deco mesh is six inches by five yards i rolled out my roll here and we're going to start cutting the deco mesh into 22 inch strips I am on my last strip here and at 22 inches right here I have this section left over which is almost six inches and guess what I'm going to do I'm going to very carefully remove this tape and use it all you're not making bows you're making ruffles this is just going to add to your ruffles so no big deal don't waste anything you know i'm just going to cut off this edge right here because it's a little rough but i just added on five inches of ruffles to make my woodland ruffles i like using these little clips to help me you can also use clothespins; those will work just fine grabbing my first strip i'm going to make two to three rolls at the end of our strip and you want to make them one inch or shorter because the shorter you make them, the tighter the little loop is going to be. That's what's keeping all that fraying hidden. So two or three times. Then I'm going to clip and I'm going to grab my rotary cutter. You can grab anything you want. Put it on top so it like weighs it down. Stretch it out. And then we're going to work on the other side. Same thing, two to three loops. Keep them under one inch. And then after that, we're just going to put two thumbs right here in the middle. And we're going to walk it in and if it's not straight if it's going to the side oh that's just going to make the ruffles nice and pretty take our weight out bring it together now this is our back side because that's where we were rolling it in take this out and then we're going to grab a pipe cleaner and we're going to put it on this side coming from this side so that your knot or your you know where we're locking it in is going to be in the back before i lock it in make sure that it's straight and because it kind of tends to be thick right here on the side because we brought it in like an accordion i just kind of like to push it back now i'm going to do my two twists and there you go you have a little ruffle and instead of just being flat it kind of pops up and it gives you volume when you do that nice and pretty and so now the fun begins this is where you turn on something music or tv or i don't know maybe diy with nadia and just start making these ruffles while you're enjoying something this is what making wreaths are all about it's about having fun just sitting there and making gorgeous gorgeous wreaths and as you can see this is not that bad it's not that hard there you go we're going to go to the other side it's beautiful it's simple another gorgeous one and you definitely definitely can do this i have six rolls of deco mesh ruffles all made up and they are so darn adorable now i'm grabbing my cross and i'm going to use the two raised rows right here in the middle 
and there's row two and three and I'm going to go in a zigzag pattern so here we go I'm going to give it two twists then I'm going to fold this little part and fold back Here we go, the length of the cross is done and look how big this is. Now for the number of ruffles per section. We have eight, eight, eight at the bottom. On top I have 12. On the sides right here we're going to have six and six. And now for the florals, I'm going to be using two bushels of this Tweedia and then fill in a little bit with this Agapanthus. And I'm not sure how much I'm going to use of this, but I just wanted to kind of, to just give it a little bit more of a purple shade with these. And then I'm going to be using these lilies. And then in between the lilies and these purple flowers, I'm going to be using some lilac ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Because the wreath is so full already, we're going to have to sneak the ribbon in to make it look like a bow. So you'll see what I'm going to do with that. But for now, we're going to start with the purple flower. Hours. To bring our florals together, I'm going to use a white floral wire. I got this one at Michael's. Now I'm just going to lay everything out. On top, I'm going to put one going towards the top and then cascade the other two down. Greenery could go up a little bit and behind the flower. Two more on the sides right here. Now I'm going to grab my agapanthus and just fill that in in the middle. Just give it a little pop of purple right in the middle of every section. I'm going to bring this together in sections. So first I'm doing the crossbar right here using floral wire to bring it together. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we want to recenter all of this and you want a little bit of the white to show on the edges So make sure to move it down. I just decided to add another one of these here to fill this section in bring this section together This section I'm going to attach to the actual wreath form I got my wire on one of the stems twist it bring it around and then this one going this way and Then we're going to actually attach it to the wreath form now I'm going to crisscross these two. Grabbing another piece of wire, I'm going to just secure it to the actual wreath form. Push it back and down. Now for the ribbon, I'm going to make little loops. And I just cut this into a 13 inch strip, which is going to make it a six inch loop because I'm going to take an inch away at the bottom right here, bring it together. You can use whatever you want to tie it in place. I'm just going to continue using the same floral wire. If you're worried about the ribbon sliding off, just make sure the tails are facing up. It has wire edging. It's going to lock it in place. The reason I made picks instead of just making, you know, big bow loops and just putting them across this way and this way is because of the lilies. Lilies are quite deep. So if they were on top, they would stand out so much. And this wreath already has a ton of volume. So my goal here is to basically put these loops right here. We're going to just set those down and then the lilies can go in between and they can go down actually and fill in that space and it's going to be so pretty. Easiest way to insert something when it's so busy, make a hole right here in the center and from each end I'm just going to feed my little loops through and of course my fourth one is going to go from here. One by one, I'm going to start attaching them on the crossings. I have my beautiful ribbon all set. And now I'm going to grab three of these lilies. And I'm just going to hot glue them. Just put them around the corners. And the lilac ribbon is kind of nice to break off that really bright white. And the white of the lilies. I decided to add two more lilies. I'm going to put one on this corner too. And one in the center.
I hope you enjoyed this video, the different styles and techniques that you saw on all the wreaths. And in the comments below, I would love to hear which wreath was your favorite. With that being said, thank you so much for being here. If you're new to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe, hit the little bell button, and of course, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up because that keeps my channel going, me growing, and me coming back making more wreath tutorials. For now, I have two videos for you to choose from if you're in a mood for more wreath tutorials. With that being said, thank you so much for being with me, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye, my sweet friends. Mwah!